أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وبه نستعين ثم صلاة وسلام على خير خلقه أجمعين سيدنا ونبينا وحبيب قلوبنا عبد القاسم المصطفى محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أرواحنا له فداء أما بعد فقد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب حب لي حكما وعلحكني بالصالحين وجعل لي لسان صدق في الآخرين وجعل لي من ورثة جنة النعيم واغفر لأبي إنه كان من الضالين ولا تخزني يوم يبعثون صدق الله علي العظيم Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Juma Mubarak. And I also congratulate all of you on the auspicious month of Rajab. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give all of us success in using this month uh, and the next two months that are following, uh, Sha'ban and Ramadan, insha'Allah, to improve our state of being, our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our akhlaq and our mannerisms. In that regards, I would like to share with you one of the hadith of Imam Bakr والسلام, one that he shared with his companions when he engaged with them. So as he sat with his companions, he shared with them a lesson that he learned from his father, meaning Imam Ali ibn Hussein Zain al-Abidin والسلام. He told them that there are four things that if a person does, his iman will become complete, his sins will be erased, and when he meets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that person will meet Allah, whereby Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with that individual. Arba'un, as he stated, man kunna fihi kamula islamuhu wa muhisat dhunubuhu wa laqya rabbuhu azza wa jalla wa huwa anhu radhin. Meaning that if we... Uh, bring these four things in our uh, character, we, we adapt these as our traits and our, our, our way of life, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will be pleased with us, our sins will be forgiven, and our submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be complete. The first thing that the Imam, he mentioned was, مَنْ وَفَى لِلَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ بِمَا يَجْعَلُوا عَلَى نَفْسِهِ لِلنَّاسِ So that person who honors his promises, or his covenants, or whatever he does uh, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So whatever a person is entrusted with from uh, people, meaning he takes on this responsibility uh, himself. He tells someone that, oh, well, hey, I can do this for you, or I can take care of this. Then that person who honors that promise that he has made will uh, complete their Islam, will have their sins erased, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be pleased with them when they, when they return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on Yawm Qiyamah. And it seems as if uh, this advice as well, it has already built into it uh, one of the shortcomings that sometimes we have when we give a promise to someone. And uh, when we give that promise, and then before fulfilling that promise, the other person makes us upset. So then we turn back up, oh, well, you know, this person has uh, done this to me, this person said this to me, so therefore I, I'm not going to do what I said I was going to do. But in this advice, it says you're not fulfilling that covenant or that promise for the sake of that person. You're fulfilling that promise for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Man wafa lillahi azza wa jalla. So, yes, you promised that person, you took on that duty or that responsibility, يَجْعَلُوا عَلَى النَّفْسِهِ لِلنَّاسِ Meaning that, yes, you, you said that you could do it. You told this person that you will do it. But when you fulfill that promise, you do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your intentions is to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by being truthful to your covenant. That's the first thing. The second thing uh, goes without saying, and we have uh, so many advice from the Ahl al-Bayt about the second thing. وَصَدَقَ لِسَانُ Ma'annas, to be honest with people, simply telling the truth, simply uh, avoiding deception and, and not misguiding people 
or telling them a lie or something that's not truthful, to be truthful with people. That is the second thing. The third thing is وَإِسْتَحْيَاء مِنْ كُلِّ قَبِيحٍ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ وَعِنْدَ النَّاسِ So to be humble and istihya also means to be bashful or to shy away from something. And what should we shy away from? كُلِّ قَبِيحٍ Every wrong doing, everything that is bad, everything which is, it's not wholesome. There's no goodness in that action. And we should shy away from that thing or express or be humble before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and before people. And this is something that sometimes, again, we uh, get wrong. And I'll speak a little bit more about this uh, later. This idea and this concept of istihya or haya to be modest or to be humble. So in this advice, we should be humble both before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and before people. Sometimes uh, we get into this mode where we are shy before people. I mean, we don't want people to see us doing something that's wrong, a sin, or uh, something that we know that people won't like. Although Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may not like that as well. So when we are in our private uh, when we are uh, not around anyone, then we engage in that action. So this advice is, you no, know, whether we are before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which we are always before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether we are in a gathering or not, then we abstain from that thing which is qabih, which is wrong, which is bad. And whether we are around people as well, that we abstain from that wrongdoing. The fourth thing, that if we do, and we adopt as a part of our trait and a part of our character that we will gain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, our sins will be forgiven and we will also be among those individuals who our deen, who our iman, our Islam, our submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is complete. It is husnu khulquhu ma'a ahli, to have the best of manners when dealing with our family, when dealing with our spouses, when dealing with our children, when dealing with our parents, when dealing with our siblings, we should display the best of manners, the best of akhlaq. So these are the four advices that Imam Bakr Ali shared with his companions. Uh, the same advice that Imam Zain al-Abidin shared with him. If we do these four things, our Islam will be complete. Our sins will be forgiven, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be pleased with, uh, with us. And of course, that pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be displayed on Yawm al-Qiyamah. First, to honor our promises. Second, to be truthful with people. To uh, be humble and modest before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and people. And fourth, to display the best of characteristics with regards to our family. To interact with them in the best of manners. So I want to talk about this concept of haya. As we mentioned that uh, sometimes, uh, folks, we are uh, modest or humble or shy when we come across people. If we see people that we know and we are doing something that we should not be doing, we will uh, shy away from them or try to run away from them. But when we are alone before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we don't display the same modesty or humbleness. And Imam Bakr alayhi wasallatu sam, rather Imam Zain al-Abidin, who told it to Imam Bakr, said this is one of the things that if we do, if we have this modesty and humbleness, both before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and before people, then it will uh, complete our Islam. So what exactly is this modesty and where does modesty come from? So it's important for us to understand this idea of modesty, al-haya, or istihya, to seek modesty, to be, seek to become humble. So haya, as some of the ulama have stated, it comes from this uh, point of recognizing the ni'ma, the blessings that we have. On one hand, we can recognize that blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and understanding our shortcoming in uh, being grateful and thankful for that sh- that uh, ni'mah, that blessing that we have. So the blessing as opposed to the gratitude that we're able to show. And likewise, with regards to uh, individuals, 
that blessing that we have from them, even if it's not something that we think we physically have a gain from them, but that idea of brotherhood. If they are our brother and sisters in Iman, in creation, uh, brother and sisters by, by blood, that in itself is a netma. It is a blessing. So that blessing, understanding that blessing, and also understanding that quite often we are not able to uh, be grateful for the uh, greatness of that blessing. And so this is where humbleness comes from. This is where uh, al-hayat comes from. This is where modesty comes from as well. Imam Sadiq to give a little bit more uh, detail on understanding this idea and concept of modesty, he equated modesty with iman. That in one place it is uh, attributed to him that he says that al-hayat nurul iman. That hayat Modesty is the light of Iman. And in another place he said that Man la Iman lahu la haya lahu. That a person who does not have Iman has no haya, has no modesty. So the form of modesty that we should have, it should coincide with Iman. And in fact, that haya, that modesty should strengthen our Iman. And the stronger our Iman becomes, the greater our haya becomes. And another very beautiful uh, tradition that is related to Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq where we can understand haya and the dimensions of haya, the dimensions of modesty and also the levels of modesty that we can gain. And they kind of go hand in hand. He speaks about five types of modesty. And when he speaks about these five types of modesty, we can extract from it the uh, people of modesty and the different degrees of modesty. So what are the five types of modesty that Imam Sadiq he mentions? He says, Al-Haya Khamsatu Anwa. So there are five types of modesty. The first type, he says, Haya Udham. So modesty or shying away from sin. The second is Haya Utaqsirin. The modesty or humbleness with regards to uh, our shortcomings. The third type is Haya Ukarama, the modesty in conjunction with the kindness and favor that is bestowed upon us. The fourth type is Haya uh, Hubbin, which is the Haya or shyness or modesty in conjunction with uh, love that is shown to us, that is expressed to us. The uh, fifth type, he says, haya uhayba. So, uh, haya or modesty in regards to, um, you could say, being awestruck. Someone is awestruck about something. We'll explain this a little bit later, in a little bit more detail. And so then the Imam, he says, walikulli wahidin min dharika. So from among all of these uh, types of haya, these five types of haya that, haya that we mentioned, he says, ahlun. وَلِأَهْلِهِ مَرَتَبَةٌ عَلَىٰ حِدَةٍ He says, for, for each type of modesty, there's a person. In other words, some people will uh, gravitate to one of these five types of modesty. Yes, you will also have some who will gravitate towards all five. We'll have all five types. But sometimes uh, a person will gravitate towards one, towards two types of modesty. And so these are the people who you would call, or as Imam Sadiq Ali Hafu Sadu Sam, he calls here Ahlu Haya. So they are Ahlu Haya. And within those five categories or types of modesty, there are different levels. So who are these Ahlu Haya? And what are the qualities of these Ahlu Haya, these modest people? So the first type of modesty that Imam Sadiq he points out, he says, Haya'u dhamb. And this is the modesty of the servant, al-abd. Haya'u al-abd. So that person who is a uh, servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who embodies this quality of abudiyya, of servitude and worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will have this haya'u dhamb. Meaning that he will be bashful, he will display a humbleness or a type of shamefulness for, before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with regards to their sins and disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that will also cause this servant to make tawbah, to 
ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. The second type of haya that Imam mentioned, he says haya taqsir. Haya taqsir. The haya of shortcomings. And this, according to some of the ulama, this is the haya of alim. The haya of that person who has knowledge. Haya of that person who has understanding. In other words, that person, yes, they may be fulfilling their ibadah, they are making their salat, they are making their fast, they are performing their hajj and paying their khums and zakat. They're doing all of these things. However, they sense in some of their ibadah that they are, uh, that they have shortcomings. That they may not be fulfilling that salat that they're praying with the most focused of attention. That as they are in their salat and they fulfill that salat, that salat meets the requirements whereby they don't have to make up that salat, it meets all the requirements, that uh, shara'i requirements, but during that salat they're thinking about uh, the phone call they made, the phone call they need to make, they're thinking about a meeting that they need to go to, so there is some shortcomings within their ibadah. So haya u taqasir, that person will again focus on making their salat the best salat it can be. The third type of uh, modesty and humbles, humbleness that the Imam he mentions, he says, Haya u karama. So this is the Haya or humbleness that a person will display in face of kindness. And this is the Haya of Ahlul Akhlaq, the moralist, as some of the ulama they have uh, defined it. This is because this person is concerned with their akhlaq. They, they are looking towards the kindness, the karama, the favor that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, given them. And they realize that in all of the favor that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them, that they are not able to uh, return or to live up to a true gratitude for that kindness. So they see that uh, that shortcoming on their on their side with regards to the kindness and favor of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, that divine kindness and favor. The fourth type of haya that Imam Sadiq he mentions, he says haya o hubbin. So this is described as the haya or the humbleness or modestness, modestiness, modestness of the lover, the one who again is trying to return and reciprocate that love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was told by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran to tell to his ummah, in kuntum tuhibbun Allah fattabi'uni yuhabibbukum Allah. That if you claim that you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then follow me. Follow the footsteps of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will give that love. He will reciprocate that love. But the hayaul hub that modesty of love is for that lover who reflects upon uh, his ability, his or her ability to reciprocate that love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and realize, realizes that divine love cannot truly be reciprocated, that they are falling short in uh, returning that love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That love from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as we uh, understand is the source of creation itself. That love which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions in the Hadith al-Qudsi, that he says, كُنْتُ خَنْزًا مَخْفِيًّا فَأَحْبَبْتُ عَنْ أُعْرَفْ فَخَلَقْتُ أَحْبَبْتُ عَنْ أُعْرَفْ فَخَلَقْتُ He says, I was a hidden treasure and I loved to be known, so therefore I created. it. And so how can we reciprocate that love that all of life and existence as we know it, has come from that love. So that haya al-hub is that person who reaches this understanding and realizes that whatever we do to reciprocate the love, and we must continue to try to reciprocate that love, not saying that oh, that if that is impossible, but we still must make that effort to reciprocate that love towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by strengthening our iman, by showing love to the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but there's a realization that we're not able to uh, fulfill and to reciprocate that love in its entirety. The last and fifth type of 
Haya or Malisi that Imam Sadiq alayhi wa sallatu wasalam he mentions he says Haya'u Hayba. And Haya'u Hayba, this is the Haya or the Malisi of the person who is awestruck or who is mystified by the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's qualities. So he looks towards the divine qualities of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he sees the Jalal as I stated, the Sulta the uh, magnitude and the greatness, the, majest- the majesty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's qualities. And he realizes that th- they're so far beyond our own comprehension, but yet we still must strive to understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as we continue to strive to understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will understand something. But then we also realize that that understanding is short of truly understanding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we strive to increase our understanding of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine qualities, and it is a never-ending process, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is the infinite, and His qualities are vast and infinite. And so that person is awestruck with regards to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's greatness. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he continues to guide us by the Qur'an and the wisdom of Ahlul Bayt alayhi wa We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase us in our modesty, our humbleness, and inshallah give us all of these uh, qualities and traits and levels of modesty within ourselves. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our sins, to cover our shortcomings. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us our needs, to cure those who are sick among our friends and family members. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy upon our deceased ones. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to hasten the reappearance of Imam Zaman, Ajul Farajul Sharif, and to make us among his helpers, his companions, and those who sacrifice our lives for him. Wa akhiru da'wana ala alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Allahumma ghfirun dhunubna wa astur ayubna wa qadi hawaijna. Wa shfi maradana wa rahma mamatna wa ajjil faraj maulana sahib al asr wa zaman. Wa ja'alna min a'wanihi wa ansarihi wa al-mustashirin bayna day wa tahti liwa'i bahak muhammadin wa alihi al-tahirin. Allahumma sallam muhammad wa alihi muhammad. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.